Have you seen pictures like this in your social media feed? They're all over the place and for good reason. It's a really cool effect. How do you do it? You can either do it in camera, the tutorial here, or you can do it in post-processing in Photoshop. Here's how. I'm gonna quickly show you how we go from a photo like this, an unremarkable, underexposed sunset, to a photo like this, which is artistic and vibrant, really cool. So this is the base photo that I started with. The first thing I do, I'm in Lightroom, first thing I'm gonna do is go in and enable lens corrections and remove chromatic apparitions. That's just my base. I do that on every photo in Lightroom. And then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on Auto and just let Lightroom pull out what it thinks it needs to do. And from here, I am going to make it even brighter because we're gonna use this as our base, but we want these colors to really pop. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up. I'm gonna come down here to the color section and I'm gonna pull the saturation up. And then I'm going to go into our masking function here and I'm going to select the sky. And then once that sky is selected, I'm going to bring the exposure up even more. I'm gonna bring the highlights down so that the color pops out a little bit more. I'm gonna pull the contrast up and that'll be a good starting point for us. And then I'm gonna to go to these three little dots. I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to duplicate and invert the mask. What that's gonna do is select everything that is not the sky. And then I'm going to pull the exposure up on that. And then I'm gonna bring the whites up on that. And that'll give us a really good starting point to blur out these waves in the water and give us that really cool effect once we're in Photoshop. At this point, this is all I'm gonna do in Lightroom. Once I have this done, I'm going to right click on the photo and I'm gonna edit in Photoshop. And we're gonna let Photoshop open up this image. And once this image is opened in Photoshop, we're gonna go up to the top to our filter menu here and we're gonna click on filter and we're gonna come all the way down to Blur Gallery, and we're gonna come down to Path Blur. And that's gonna open up the Path Blur menu. We have this arrow here with little white circles on either side. This tells Photoshop which direction to make the blur. In this case, we wanna keep it horizontal, so we just wanna draw that line all the way across the horizon. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something like this. Photoshop is going to compute and then here we have speed. You see we're at 50% speed here and it's just kind of a really soft version of this blur. We wanna really pump that up, even all the way. So even if we went all the way to 500%, watch what it does. That is the look that we're going for. And then we have this end point speed. You see that when we move this down, we're gonna get more detail in the image. And if we move it up, we're gonna have less detail in the image. So it really depends on your personal preference and what you're looking for. I'm gonna keep it somewhere down in the middle here, somewhere somewhere right around the 200 pixel mark. Somewhere around there I think looks really nice. And so then I'm just going to click the OK button and then Photoshop is gonna make those changes on the image. You can see that's a really good example of what we're trying to accomplish here. We have this nice contrast in the whites and the blues and the oranges and the yellows. I think that looks really great. So we will close this in Photoshop. It's gonna bring up the option to save. We're gonna click save. And then Photoshop is gonna close this image and then reopen it in Lightroom with these new edits, which will look something like this. And then we can continue to edit if we would like. We can go back into our global settings here and we can just click auto and Lightroom will really pull out the contrast of those colors, which I think looks good. I might pull the exposure up a little bit just for personal preference. And then bring the whites up a little bit because I like how that looks. And pull the blacks down a little bit for a little more contrast. And you see, we will end somewhere around here and then you can continue to fine tune this however you'd like. You can increase or decrease the color temperature. You can make it, give it a cooler look if you'd like to bring it down here or something like this, which looks really good. You can make it a little bit warmer, which also looks great. It's, again, it's just personal preference, whatever works for you. But once we're at this point, you see that we have an incredible change from what we started with, which was here, to where we ended, which is here. So we have our before and we have our after. It's a huge difference. It's much more artistic. It's much more pleasing to the eye. And it's something that seems to be trending on social media right now. So you can post your own version of this trending style on social media. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. We have many more tutorials like this on the way. We have many that we've already done. Hope to have you on board for this adventure. Thank you for being here.